Hey guys, my name is Batsumio, and today I'm excited to say that Ubisoft has just confirmed that there is going to be another year of DLC for Rainbow Six Siege. They just released the details for the Season Pass, and as a lot of you guys probably expected, it's very similar to the last Year 3 DLC. You'll of course get some Rainbow Six Siege credits, all 8 operators, they're doing 8 operators once again, 7 days early access on that, the Renown boost, everything that we're very comfortable, this is becoming very standard. But the thing that I'm really excited about is the Universal Volcano Signature Skin. Now I realize that all of this is subjective, but I gotta admit that this thing looks incredible. If you look back at past Universal skins that were included in the Season Pass, they're all right, but I don't think they even hold a candle to this. Like, I really feel like they went above and beyond. I think the best comparison is that this is going to be a fan favorite, consider uh, very similar to the way that Black Ice skin was when that first released. I realize one of the reasons why that is so sought after is because it's so rare, but even still, I feel like this is on that same quality and also just looks amazing. I really wish that Ubisoft would do more of these kinds of things because, in my opinion, they look just absolutely incredible. Now, Sadly, Ubisoft did not include a year four roadmap with this reveal, but we do know a couple things, and one of them being is that we are going to be getting eight new operators. Some people might be disappointed by this news because they were hoping that it'd be dropped down to six. Others might be thinking, why in the world would you want that? Isn't more content a better thing? Well, one reason why people were kind of hoping that Ubisoft would slow down on the amount of operators that they were introducing is that it seems like they've been having a hard time balancing them out. It seems like every other season, an operator is blatantly overpowered. This seems to happen over and over and over again, and this might just simply be because they just don't have enough time to test it, ensure that they're not broken, not overpowered, or underpowered, and that they're rushing through this process to get that content out through the door. And so by reducing it down to six operators instead of eight, that would give them a couple of months or a couple extra months between each of these seasons so that they can release that quality of content. Regardless though, we now confirm that we are going to be getting eight and so hopefully Ubisoft is going to be able to deliver with some really fun and well-balanced operators. Another thing I'm really curious about is how they're going to be handling the map updates. As we all know, the last year included some pretty significant changes from the years before. They went down to only two new maps with some map reworks instead of having four new maps every single season. And so I'm really curious to see what they're going to be doing with this next year. Are they going to be including some single player or co-op mission like they did with Operation Outbreak for the first part of the DLC? Are they going to be scrapping that idea and just focusing on the multiplayer and trying to improve the maps like old maps for example? We're really just going to kind of have to wait and see. Personally what I'm hoping for is that if they do decide to go with more of that co-op gameplay that they do give us an actual story. I would love to learn more about these characters that we've fallen in love with. I would love to see more interactions between them. Doc, Rook, Tachanka. I think that would be phenomenal. If they just give us kind of Zombies 2.0, while that would be cool, I will admit it'll be a bit disappointing. I realize that this is kind of far-fetched. I mean, that would require a lot of effort on the part of Ubisoft, but if they do want to continue to do more of this stuff, that's kind of the direction that I'm hoping they go down. I'm also really hoping that we see more of an emphasis and focus on map buffs, going on into existing maps and improving upon them. We got some really good examples of this last year with Clubhouse. I think that is a lot more balanced, a lot more fun than it was before. They did a good job with Consulate, but I'd like to see more of that. Go into the objectives, go into the maps that could use some tweaks, not a complete overhaul, we don't need that on every single map, but go on in, make some subtle improvements, make the objectives a little bit more viable for both offense and defense, that is what I'm really hoping for with this next year. Another piece of news that I think is noteworthy is that Ubisoft has changed their toxicity policy in Siege. You guys may have noticed that every once in a while, if someone uh, used toxic language in chat, the in-game chat, uh, that they would get kicked from a game. They would just get flat out banned from the game and they couldn't return. Now, this would suck if that person was on your team. Of course, you don't want toxicity, but sometimes people weren't doing it maliciously. Sometimes they were just typing in a chat, they misspelled a word, and they got flagged for toxic language, and then they got kicked from the game. It wasn't anything on their fault, they weren't trying to be toxic, but because this system was very severe, 
uh, there really wasn't a whole lot they could do about it. And so with this new system, uh, now if you say something in chat or you misspell a word, it's not going to instantly kick you. It will say in the chat that you are going to be reviewed for toxic behavior, and later on you might get banned, for example, but it shouldn't be in the middle of the game anymore. And so hopefully this will solve a lot of those problems. You're still not going to want to be toxic because eventually it is going to catch up to you, but I, in general I think that this was a good change by Ubisoft. And then finally, they also announced that the two-step authentication is in place if you want to play in ranks. If you're not aware of what this new system is, basically if you're on PC and you want to play ranked, you are now going to have to link your phone number with your Ubisoft account. The reason why they're doing this is that they're essentially just trying to stop the amount of cheating in the game. If you're someone who gets caught using a third-party software to get an edge against everyone else, uh, your account is going to get banned, but also the phone number associated with that as well. And so as soon as you try to buy another account during a free weekend when there's a discount, and then you link that same phone number with that new Ubisoft account, you're still not going to be able to play ranks. And so I realize that it's a bit inconvenient. I think overall it is going to be a good thing for the health of Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, but yeah guys, that is what it for today's little update video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm just super excited that Rainbow Six Siege is getting a year four DLC. I got to admit that when the game first came out, I never thought it was going to get this far. I thought it was kind of going to be a flash in the pan. It was a really cool concept, but the fact that they have supported this entire time and it's just a great game, it's cool to see that they are continuing to support it. Uh, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.